All right, everybody, let's do an audio and visual check. Let me know in the chat if you guys could hear and see me okay. Um, I'm going to do the intro pretty quick. You guys can see I'm in a trade. I want to talk about it, and I might be managing this trade as well because, you know, I am trading it. <laughs> I'm a trader first, and this is a really great trade that I got into. Um, so let's jump into it. Sounds good. Everything looks good. Hey, Rips is in the house. Coach J is in the house as well. Let's get everything set up. All right. Um, man, this trade is going fast. I'm pretty, pretty excited when a trade works out immediately in your favor. Um, yeah, this is doesn't happen this often. Um, so let's get to it. Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Slow Markets. That was quite the en quite the intro for a class. As always, we're going to be talking about the live markets. As you can see behind me, I have the, the Nikkei, the Japanese market behind me. We're going to be talking about trading concepts. And I just put into our YouTube chat our top step risk disclosure. Because we're going to be talking about the live markets, obviously, we don't want you to just be following exactly like me. It's for educational purposes only. So let's talk about the trade that I'm in. This is the Nikkei. This is the Japanese market. And it's really simple and straightforward, right? You can see every time we've, I mean, we have an all-time high up here. And every time we've had a nice little rally, we've had a huge sell-off. Um, sure enough, I've been watching this. Um, we had a nice little rally. I got into a short um, three contracts. And sure enough, we're getting that sell-off. Let's see if we could come back. I would like to see my first targets right around here, right around, let's say, 125 and see about the key psychological level 40,000 right at the bottom of this range. And so if we start to zoom in, if we zoom in to say a five minute chart, um, actually let's zoom in even further. Let's zoom into a one minute chart and I could show you the little bit of a reversal that I got into this trade on. Um, it was essentially right here. Um, we rallied up, we had a bit of a rejection, and I had a sell order about right here, obviously at 42.75. That got triggered, that got me triggered in, and you know, my stop loss is up above here. This is a good risk reward. I'm actually gonna move my stop to here. You know what, I'm gonna even move it a little bit closer. Um, so I have a really good risk-free trade, pretty close. One, take profit there. I'll have my two down even a little bit further. And while I'm doing that, I'm also managing my live account over here on my phone. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm a, I'm a trader first and I have a lot, so many things going on. As you guys could imagine, I, I just got my express funded accounts moved to my live account. So I have a, you know, pretty close to a hundred thousand dollar live account that I am trading as well. And I just started some new combines that I have been practicing on. So for my combines, you guys can see, let me show you some of the new combines that I'm testing. I, I, for everybody who's a gold trader, I placed my first gold trade in some combines tonight. So you can see I'm right around break even. Yesterday, I hit a daily loss limit in these combines. Um, today, I had, uh, I mean, just tonight anyway, I was trading gold and I did pretty well. I was actually in short with these combines. Um, I already hit my, my max profit on these combines in this account. So that's why you could see um, this is my last one. I'm going to see if I could get some profit going into here. I also took this in, in my live account as well. So just saying, um, David Lee, is the rumor about 10 XFAs true? Um, I don't know 100%. Um, I do know that MP mentioned something down that line on Top Step TV, but nothing's been confirmed. Um, when it is confirmed and when they Top Step and we announce it, then you will hear it first, most likely on Top Step TV. That's going to be a big announcement. That's a big thing for Top Step. And, and I know MP has been talking about it on Top Step TV. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be going back and forth watching this. Um, 
and managing this. So I hope you guys don't mind. I'll show you guys how I manage it. I'm doing the same thing on my phone, just copy paste. And some. I'm gonna go back to the NASDAQ as well. So I might try and do a lot of, what do we call it? Multitasking in front of you guys. Um, this is trading. This is how I trade. This is slow markets. And yeah, that that that's pretty much it, right? So I'm gonna be having this on. Actually, let me get a let me get something where I could switch to the Nasdaq and continue to watch this. So here's the DOM. Where can I put this at? Um, there we go. That's the DOM. I could watch it on the DOM. There we go. All right. Um, we have a lot of people in the chat. They're saying the Nikkei is now in top step x wow that is great see that's why i said just give it time top step x is getting to one of those platforms which is one of the best um you know top step x has the p potential to be one of the best platforms as we slowly transition um it's awesome like i like how you hear us at top step say that um it's just been two months right two or three months since top step started to get released for testing. I've been testing it as well. So I know a lot of you guys have been testing it. Obviously you guys are on it and it's exciting to see a platform um, built by traders for traders. I'm gonna keep this on. Let's go ahead. I'm going to move on to the NASDAQ and if something happens, I'll switch back over to the Nikkei and we could talk about it. Um, let's do some analysis on the daily chart because I like to start on the daily, see where we're at, see what's going on from an overall perspective. And as I go through this, feel free to just type in the chat if you guys have any questions. We have a great team behind the scene who is answering some of those questions and will be able to feed me some of the questions that I might miss. So here's the NASDAQ on the daily and you know I have been a bull market everybody knows that I am a bull market as well so here's a few things that we were talking about yesterday um, I was looking for the market to break down you know there's a possibility that the the market would break down below this and we see a run down to the 18,000 to 18,100 it did not you know the bulls came in this is a bullish market and sure enough this daily trend held true it was a great day for the buyers um, for everybody who was looking to buy the dip it was a buy the dip <laughs> it's the buy the dip market buy the dip don't don't stress about what's going on maybe plan for and prepare for the worst um, but it was another buying opportunity that's all it really was was we we sold off we came down we tested it um sure enough oh, let's see nope not there not there oh come on is it i thought it was this hockey there we go so each one of these just buy the dip like that is what the market has been doing since pretty much what the end of november beginning of october Every sell-off has been buying opportunities. This one is starting to look like it is the exact same. Um, we won't know if it's we're going to continue, right? We're, are we going to continue and break to new all-time highs? We don't know. We're day traders. We're here at Top Step, and we're looking to day trade. Very much <laughs> if we were a buyer... Um, Today, if we were as a buyer yesterday, you know, I was a buyer, you know, it worked out really well. Today, I didn't trade during the New York session because I took my losses during the, the slow markets. But yeah, it, it was another buyer's market where we just buy the dip and that's it. That's been the story of the NASDAQ pretty much since October. So we're kind of, we're kind of back in that zone, right? We're, we're kind of in the middle of this zone. We sold off down below it. We turned around and we're right back into this zone. And so the question that we must ask ourselves is this used to be support. And now will this support become resistance? So that's something that we have to pay attention to. Let me go ahead and switch over here. We this is back to the Nikkei. Uh, man, it came so close to just filling me, but it didn't. Dang it. Um, anyways. 
So yeah, that's something that I'm going to be watching and I am going to be paying attention to is we sold off below this consolidation for the past week and a half. And when we rallied back uh, and we're right back into this zone. So let's zoom into a hourly chart and we could start to see a little bit better. So here's the hourly chart on the NASDAQ. Ooh, let's let's make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye and let's zoom in a little more. Does this look familiar to anybody? Does this pattern look familiar? Does it? I mean, this is very simple and basic. Um, this should look familiar for you, to you guys. I mean, here we go, right? Like, what? <laughs> Patterns repeat themselves. It, it, they really do. It, it's it's that's how it is, right? Um, sure enough, like this is this is it. Um, let's see. Yep, I think I just got filled. There we go. So I'm out of one contract. Let me make sure. Oh man, we just wrecked my computer. Um, let me make sure I'm getting the same thing in my live account. As you guys could see, this is my live account and I, it's the same exact trade. Dang, nice, nice. There we go. So I'm up about 2000 in my live account right now. Um, man, what a, what a trade. Let's, let's leave this last one. So orders at the same spot for my live account. It's right here, right at 4,000. So we'll see how we can get, get this on. Okay. Let's go ahead. That, that was a quick one. I need to make sure that as we start closing out, I did this on my live. I'm going to go ahead and lock into some profit. Worst case scenario, I make money. Um, now let's get back to the NASDAQ. So same thing guys. It really is like, look at this. You know, we, we made a low, we made a higher low, made a low, made a higher low. We made a low and we just made a higher low and if that's not a beautiful pattern, I don't know what is, right? Like this is, that is it. That is technical analysis at its finest. Patterns repeat themselves. They might not be exactly the same, but the concept can still be that. We have the double bottom. Um, and it was just buying the market up from there, right? Like buy the dips. It's, it's been by the dip mentality. However, we're at this area now um, where... I'm sorry, I, I keep getting distracted because the Nikkei keeps just selling off. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I, I can't get distracted. Pay attention to, to the class. Uh, you guys know, uh, like I said, I, I, I told you I've been switching back and forth. Um, trades don't always work like this, guys. They really don't. Um, they're, they're not always this pretty. Sometimes this a move like this, a trade like this, for me does not happen so perfectly. Um, it, it's nice to show you guys like this, this is it. We'll, we'll see if we can come back down to the fourth 40,000 level. Um, anyway, yeah, we're, we're right back at the bottom of this zone. So you guys could see this. It's very clear and obvious. This huge zone that the NASDAQ has been sell has been trading in. Um, we've been in there. We sold off, we consolidated, had a double bottom, and we've rallied. We're right back in that. So uh, how do we trade this? What can we plan for? What, like, what should we do about this? Um, we're right at the level where the buyers, like what do we want to call this? This is a decision zone. Like we are in a decision zone. And if we lower this, we can say that, yeah, this is a decision zone. You know, this was support. This has been acting as support since, you know, March 22nd, March 24th, 5th. And now it acted as resistance one time and we're kind of hovering in there. It, it, it acted as resistance. This looked like an hour ago. So something big just happened an hour ago. Um, any, if anybody knows what that, what happened, uh, maybe some news event that looks like a, a hundred point move in an hour uh, during slow markets. That's pretty big, right? 
Um, so definitely something happened. It, it looks like some news event, probably. But it acted as resistance again. And so the question is, do we have this as resistance and do we sell back down and maybe find uh, a trend line or find some type of support uh, and make a higher low? That's what I would like. That's what I am looking for because I'm a buyer and I want to find places to buy. It's hard for me to buy up here. I don't want to be a buyer right at resistance, even though you know we can break through and come back up to these highs. It's very possible that we just get back into this zone and we come right back up into the high of where we have been for the past you know one to two weeks. So that's a possibility. It's hard for me to trade it because it's just not the way I trade in terms of my risk reward and my trading style. It doesn't mean you can't because if you are bullish and you think we could rally back up into the top of the zone around 18,500 to 600, then yeah, I, that's definitely a way to take advantage of it. Um, I personally would much rather wait for us to sell off and maybe look for a higher low. I, I mean, maybe that was a higher low, but I want to see another higher low. So that way it will give me a, an opportunity to manage my risk, right? Cause I'm looking to manage my risk first and foremost. Um, I missed this. I didn't trade this. Um, that looks like it happened really, really quick. This one happened really quick, but yeah, I want to see a sell off and, and maybe some opportunities to get in long. If you're bearish, I know that pal, and there's always drama that's going on in the market and around the world where pal was saying something about, we need to continue to look at the data um, to determine like when we're gonna lower rates. I mean, it's been the same song and dance for years. And it sounds like that's maybe what happened here. I I'm not 100% sure. I haven't been paying too much attention. You guys probably know a lot better than I do. So if you are bearish and you do think that this is, will now become resistance, then yeah, this could be an area where you can limit risk um, in terms of maybe getting into some shorts in this zone using a nice stop loss up here and then looking for some targets down to the bottom of this range. Um, yeah, I'm not a bear. It's hard for me to take a short. It just really is in this market. But if you want to take a short, like this is one way that you could do it. Um, preferably, I'll zoom into a five minute chart. And then I will see if yeah, that is quite the that's quite the movement, right? That is an interesting one. So if we get rid of that and we're kind of in that zone and we talk about how do we get into positions? How do we get in limit orders? So let's talk about it real fast. Um, and then we could go from there. So how would I get into a short if I wanted to short the NASDAQ? Well, the first way to do it, um, let me show you guys here because I, I have a lot of traders ask me this question. It's like, well, how do you get in? How do you get out? You know, where do you put your orders? What, what are you looking for? There's two ways to do this, right? Um, this is a huge rally. So it makes it, this makes it a little bit more difficult, right? So if I wanted to get short the NASDAQ and I'm saying that this will show into resistance, I'm not going to do this. This is just an example for traders who want to get short. Um, the two ways to do it. I like to use a, either buy limit or this would be a sell limit or a sell stop. For example, this would be a sell stop. So what this is saying is I will get triggered into a short as soon as we break below, then I'll get short for this example, 18, four, we'll do an even 29 for simple math. Um, this is very important. I, I know a lot of traders here, probably has seen me do, do this a few times. I'm going to move this and it's such a distraction. Um, and we're starting to, to catch a bid uh, as Andre would say in the Nikkei, I'm happy. I'm in profit. I hit take profit on one of them. Um, so yeah, 
anyway, this is very important. Um, this is one of the bigger concepts for slow markets. So if I was to make a clip and maybe I'll talk with Danielle and the team that soon we're going to be able to clip slow markets and some of these YouTube segments and post it as a channel. So that way you guys don't have to watch a whole one hour class of me just talking. Um, this is very important uh, and maybe a lot of traders do not know how to do this. And it's very basic, very simple orders and trade management. We want to make sure it's an OCO. So one cancels other, which means I only get triggered in if we sell off and break below. And I like to put it below support um, for a sell stop. So that would trigger me into a short. My stop loss would be maybe up here. So this would be an example of a stop loss, which would be a buy stop. And these orders will be connected to each other, right? So if even if we rally up, it will not trigger me into a long. It will only become active if we sell off and I trigger into a short. So that's the first way. That's how you get into this type of position. If you want to short, that would be your stop loss. And then of course, um, it goes without saying, maybe you have your take profit down here. So something like this is an example of what I like to trade and how I like to trade if I was going to short the NASDAQ. I would place this trade, you could see I would leave it exactly how it is, um, and then I'd go to bed. And then either the market goes up, I don't get triggered in because this is an OCO order, it will only trigger me in if it goes down. And I know when I wake up, the main thing is, you know, it's either gonna go up, I'm not, I'm gonna wake up and no trades happened. It's gonna go sideways, no trades happened. It's gonna go down, trigger me in. And then once I'm triggered in, then I'll either hit my stop loss or my take profit. I know what my risk is. I know what my reward would be. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm either gonna be waking up with exactly the amount that I plan to lose or the exact amount I plan to make or somewhere in between, right? Like. I know what the worst and best case scenarios are. Um, sometimes I get into two contracts, for example, two contracts, and then I have one take profit here, and maybe I have another take profit here. So that way, if we do break, then I have two entries. So this is one example of how I like to trade. A lot of times I drop down to micros because this is a lot of risk for a mini, right? That's 30 points on a mini at 20 points per minute, per, 20 points or $20 per point, that's what 30 points times 20, that's $600. That's $600 a trade. That's a big trade. So I'll drop down to micros and instead of risking $600 per contract, I'd only be risking what $60 per contract. Um, that will allow me to have multiple contracts on. So that's an example using a breakout while I go to sleep. Now, here's the other option, right? And, and you've seen this is pretty good risk rewards when it comes to this. The way that I like to do it, my personal favorite is limit orders. So I'd keep my take profits the same, which I should. Um, however, I'd use a limit order. For example, if we do rally back up into this long wick, maybe I get into a short up there, then this will allow me to have a much tighter stop or at least a much smaller risk and it would look something like this. So maybe something like this. I have a nice stop right above 500 and my risk reward is much better. The probabilities are less likely because the market will be going against the direction I want the market to go, um, but my risk reward is much greater. And so what, what this is saying is kind of the same, right? If we sell off, you know, nothing happens. If we go sideways, nothing happens. If we go up, then I will get triggered into a short, then all these orders will become active and then it's either gonna hit my stop loss or turn around. This trade is a lot less likely. Uh, I typically only profitable on this trade 20 to 30%, but the risk reward, as you guys could see, is much greater that I'm okay if I only win this you know, 25% of the time um, because the risk reward, so that's one risk, and if we're just, this is just eyeballing it. It's not exact math um, in front of you guys. So that's about a, you know, just under a three to one for my first contract. And then 
over a four to one on my third contract, right? Um, so this is about a three and a half to one. You could also leave this one on as a runner and sometimes, you know, the market just sells off, right? And there's been times where I leave one runner on and I wake up and the market's down, you know, three, 400 points and it's a great day, right? So there's some main examples. Um, I, I used to go over it a lot, almost every single night. I think that's a good refresher for everybody here. Um, there's a lot of questions. I know you guys have a lot of questions. Feel free to rewatch it. It's amazing because this is recorded on Top Steps YouTube and you can rewatch this as much as you want. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get a clip and I'll be talking about this more and more. Um, that's the benefit of joining me during slow markets, right? You get to see this kind of stuff. This is how I trade. This is how I made, um, what am I now? I, I, I should have been number one on the leaderboard today. Um, however, they're moving my funds to the express funded account to live um, because they're moving like 51,000 from express funded to live. And I already have 50,000 in my live account. So technically it's a total of 100,000 and first place was 96. So I would have been first. Um, oh, well, would have, could have, should have, right, Hecker? Uh, heck, Sarah, um, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I think it's just going to be a matter of time, uh, the way that I'm seeing everybody trade. <laughs> if that, that is the most egotistic, <laughs> that, if, is, if that isn't uh, me being cocky, um, it's just honest. Rips, rumor has it, Coach doesn't actually swing trade these types of trades. He gives the market. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so I hope that makes sense. Let's open it up to some questions. Uh, that, that was quite the explanation. I don't have a drink of water. I usually have a drink of water on my desk that I can drink because I, I tend to get a dry mouth because I'm talking so much. Um, let's see. Coach, how are you? Based on your experience, would you advise someone to trade NQ or ES? If you're brand new, I would say maybe lean towards ES. Um, because ES is a little slower. Um, but I think my best advice would be, would be uh, stick with one market. Stick with one market, get good at it. Every single market has its own fingerprint, its own unique characteristics. Um, you know, I, I was watching something yesterday um, and I think Elon Musk quoted it. There's a few other people that go about this because I get this question a lot and I see this question over and over again, um, is how do I manage a drawdown? How do I manage losses? And how could I manage such a horrible win percentage? And I think it has to deal with expectations. It really has to do with expectations. If you know your statistics, if you know your expectations on this, you, you focus on the process, but the, the talk and the, the, the quote is happiness is reality minus expectations. And, and I wrote that down and just thinking about that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in here that maybe disagree, um, maybe agree and have maybe more insights. But the way I understood that and the way I see that I'm young, I'm relatively young to, you know, a lot of traders here, but you know, we have so much more available to us in terms of what we can do and tools and resources, um, today compared to 1980s compared to 1990s, right? Where you're happy to get a TV and the TV was just cable and it wasn't very great. Now I have four computer monitors. I'm dealing with, you know, tens of thousands of dollars and talking to an audience of 800 people. Um, and it's the same with trading, right? We have to have realistic expectations. And then when reality comes and you end up do catching a good trade, that's nice, right? The reality is most traders fail. And the reality is you don't hit home runs every single trade. Um, just like we've seen this Nikkei trade, the reality is this does not happen every single time. It, it, 
I sold it, it went straight down, it hit my take profit on one, and I'm in a risk-free trade, and I'm gonna let this trade run overnight. Um, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Uh, crew dude, how does your bias affect how you get in a resting order? Um, I'm always a bull trader, so I'm always looking for opportunities to buy. Um, it, it's hard not to be biased, it, it really is. Biased is the death of traders, but it can also lead to some really, really good days. Um, for me, my bias is on technical analysis. If the tech, if my technical analysis on these higher time frames, like you guys see me do with these 60 minute charts, um, then sure enough, I'm gonna be looking for buying opportunities. And if we sell off, I just lose money. That's just the reality of trading. It says, Today, I'm going to go in and I'm going to be a buyer. I'm going to buy. I'm going to look for opportunities to buy the market because of X, Y, Z. If the market does this, then I am no longer bullish. I would be bearish, right? That's where we set rules for ourselves. Um, and yeah, I, I did that yesterday during, and it was interesting because during this big sell-off, I came in today saying, I'm going to be a buyer. And the market kept selling off and I'm like, yes, I want to be a buyer. I'm going to be a buyer until we break below this these pivots. So I said, I'm a buyer until we break below these. Um, and this was the first area I was looking at. And sure enough, we sold down into this zone. I did take a loss. I'm like, okay, today's just gonna be a really crappy day and I'm gonna just take a whole bunch of losses. I took my first loss. I'm like, okay, I'm still gonna be a buyer. And you know, sure enough, I ended up getting into a decent position and made some good money on uh, being a buyer. So it's making sure you have your rules and your strategies. And uh, yeah, that, that's just the thing, right? Make sure you have your rules. Make sure you plan out. Uh, practice like you pray, play. We all know LeBron is probably dropping over 20 points. That's almost a guaranteed, right? But he practices. He practices. There's so much more um, that he does behind the scenes. So that someone just rang my doorbell. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have, um, I have to get something set up. Sorry guys, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah. Yes. I seen your Slack message. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. Um, may, maybe later I will. Um, but yeah, I just need to make sure no one rings my doorbell while, while I'm in class. Sent me a pizza. No, it's not food. Unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> Tell the DoorDash to these. Yeah. Uh, who's LeBron? Yeah, LeBron's a base. Uh, he'd probably be a better baseball player than... Uh, okay. Anyway. Where was I at? I got distracted, unfortunately. Um, let's let's go ahead. Let's talk about Nikkei. I'm going to let this Nikkei trade run. Let's talk about... We're going to go over to crude oil. I did not look at crude oil. Um, but sure enough, we're still bullish. I mean, crude has just been on quite the rally. It really has been. We, yesterday, it was the same thing. We did not get a pullback on crude. We essentially just went sideways and then straight up. This is a 60 minute chart. We're holding above 85. We went up, we tested 86. And I think it's the same thing. Um, this is such a bullish market. I do not want to short crude oil. And I think it's going to be the same thing. I just need to sit on my my hands, you know, put my hands on my butt um, and wait for a sell off in order for the market to have a pullback and find buying opportunities. Unfortunately, we just need to sit back and just watch gas prices go up and up and up and gas prices get more and more expensive, which is just crappy, right? MJ is worth three brilliant. Okay, we're, you guys are stuck on an MJ, uh, MJ, MJ LeBron debate. Yes, it's fun talking about MJ and LeBron. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to pass on crude. I'm a crude bull trader as well, just the way it's seasonality. We're going here in the U.S. into, you know, summer, spring, and crude typically with seasonality goes up. 
Um, so I'm going to wait and I'm going to be looking for pullbacks to buy. Until then, I'm passing on crude. Let's talk about gold. I took a gold trade, my very first gold trade, everybody. I, I It was fun. Um, it was short-lived. Um, I, I took my gold trade on my Express Funded accounts. <laughs> Like I said, Express Funded accounts are for testing. I, I've debated even even showing you guys this because it's not what I I really uh, I really teach. But I, I think I'm just going to show this to you guys anyway <laughs> because why not? Um, whenever I'm testing something, I just yeah, I might, might as well just show it to you guys. So we all know gold has been just going up and up and up. And sure enough, we broke above 300. We got all the way up to 320s. And we had a, the, the famous three-bar reversal over here on the hourly chart. So what I was looking for and what I still am looking for, and this, actually is, this is actually making me want to, you know what? You know what? I'm going to short gold right now in my live account. Give me a moment, guys. I'm going to get short gold. Okay, I am now short one contract gold. Order order and let me show you, and I'll I'll walk you through and tell you why. Um, okay, one one contract gold short. Um, so <laughs> this is a very tight stop. I, I have a really tight stop on it. I'll, I'm going to walk you guys through this. I needed to. Uh, I needed to like I needed to act fast, right? I I needed to just not talk about it and and trade it. Um, anyway, so what I'm looking for, what well, it's too late. Uh, it, what I looked for and what I'm seeing is we had a rally like this, right? And if you guys seen my other class, this is another key thing. I, I talked about one thing. Uh, I was looking to have maybe another class on this, um, but this is something that I also look at. It's average true moves. And what that means is when a market moves, on average, how much does it move? So this was the move on gold. As you guys could all see this from the bottom over from the bottom over here to the top over here, right? So this is a move on gold. Now it's not an exact, it's very much like support and resistance, it's a zone. So sure enough, guess what? And, and Coach J, if you're there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. How interesting is that? How interesting does this work? Uh, it doesn't work every single time. It just, like, that's how it works, right? Um, there's a higher probability of the market to reverse and pull back when we get to these average moves um, from top to bottom. Whoops. So this one was that move, and now it has a chance for a pullback up there. Yeah, A, B equals C, D. So that is something I do look for. Yeah, Jake, yeah, Coach J, he see, when I first started co coaching here at Top Step, I showed him this. It's just interesting. It's just the way the market moves. It, it's scary sometimes how accurate this is. Um, we got there. We got this little reversal. You see, even more important was this three bar reversal. Look at that. We're at one true move, right? So we were at this. On top of it, we had a three bar reversal. That was great. That's what triggered me in. Um, actually, you know what? This is one where, oh man, th whoops. So this is on this account. <laughs> so let, let me, I, I need to get out of this because I don't want to get past, um, I don't want to get it past my max profit. Um, let me mark. I'll, I'll just mark it there. We don't have to look. Let, let's go like this. Okay, whatever. This is just assimilated. I'm still short on my live account. I'm short. Um, let me tell you guys. I'm short 2320. So 2320 and 30 cents. So 232030. On the, and that's on my live account. You could probably see that maybe 23, 20, 30. That's where I'm short on my live. Um, well, just one contract, nothing too big. Um, 
anyway, so we're at that one true move, right? And then we had that three bar reversal. And I said, let's just, this is too good for me to take. I, I, I want to start getting into gold. And so I took it, right? And so I'm like, okay, let's do it. I am taking this trade. And let me show it. I actually have to switch accounts real quick and I'll show you the trade. And I did what I recommend nobody do. And that's me just testing. I, I wanted to get past these combines. And um, sure enough, here we go. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, that's why we put the risk disclaimer. Let me show you guys the, the trade. Um, <laughs> Okay, there's the trade. So anyway, here's the five minute chart. We started to consolidate, right? And I went ahead, I got short 15 contracts, um, checking out how this works, how it looks on the fills, how this has been an ask. Um, I wanted to pass these combines and sure enough, I copy trade against these six trading combines, 15 contracts, um, short gold. My first trade on gold, I just went on, I just went at it, right? Um, and sure enough, it sold off. I hit my my take profits. Man, that's ugly. I, I just hate how this looks. I'm sure excited to switch over to Top Step X. That's for sure. So anyway, sure enough, um, I got in short 15 contracts up here. As you guys could see, um, sure enough, we immediately sold off. I got out. I hit my max profit on those combines of 4,500. Um, essentially we're still there, right? We're consolidating. I'm still, and you've seen my analysis on the, the higher time frame on those hourly time frame, And then I use the lower time frame for my trade setup. Um, what I'm looking for. And if we go back to the, the hourly chart, what I'm going to look for is a pullback to maybe here, stop loss, entry, target. So something like this is what I'm actually looking for. Um, so if my entry was, let me switch back to that one. So if my entry was 23, 20 and a third, so 23, 20 and a third, let me, let me, let's just do the math. I'm gonna do everything live in front of you guys. Um, just so you guys could see. So if my, I'm gonna go ahead and 23, 20 and a third. So that's my entry. This is gonna be my stop loss. And then I'm gonna look for maybe here as my take profit. So this is gonna be something like that. And it's what, $10 per tick? You know, make make sure I'm, correct me guys if I'm wrong. I think it's $10 per tick um, on, on gold. Let, let's see. Yeah, I think it's $10 per tick. Yes, thanks for the confirmation. So essentially what I am doing is 23, 20. So sorry for this, I'm doing some math. This is exactly how I trade. So you guys just have to deal with it. So what I'll do is 23, 20.3. Um, and the difference between that and 23, 25.4. So I'm risking $5.10. I'm just doing this math. Um, Top Step does, Top Step X does this for us. That, that's why I've started to really like Top Step X and, and I'm excited to switch over to it. Um, <laughs> and let's go. So on this one, I'm risking $510 um, for my risk. Yeah, about, five, about $500 um, for the risk. So give me one second. Someone keeps ringing my doorbell. I'll be right back. Give me just one moment. I'll be back, guys. kids trying to sell me something <laughs> okay <laughs> man I, I don't want any cookies I, I eat enough sugar um, 
I eat enough sugar as it is. And, and plus, I, we, us as traders, we all live sedentary lifestyles, sedentary lifestyle, um, as it is sitting in front of a computer. But, but no sugar for me. <laughs> and I probably they wouldn't have went away until I, um, until I answered the door. Yeah, good thing I got back. Maybe it's one of those things where you know if I don't get back in ten minutes, guys, then you know call call the local uh, police department i get kidnapped live stream we don't want that to happen um anyway so i'm risking about 500 dollars on this trade and my reward looks to be about 600 to 650 um, on this individual trade it's something i'm okay with i'm gonna this is one trade that i am going to be um holding overnight so i will go to bed with a gold short um, in the morning i'm going to wake up with either a 500 dollar profit or a 650 or a 650 profit or a 500 dollar loss if we do sell off um, i might adjust my stop loss before i go to bed um, let's zoom into a five minute chart and we will confirm this is the pivot i'm looking at if we do sell off maybe we could get down to um, obviously my stop loss is here if we do sell off and say we break below this and right before I go to bed, I probably will move my stop loss here and that's limiting my risk. And then, you know, $500 stop loss now turns into a $300 stop loss. And then I have a good three to one risk reward. Um, so we have 15 more minutes. Um, let's watch this. This is my trade. This is my trade in my live account. Um, this is exactly how I have my trade set up in my live account. Um, let's open up to some questions. This has been a, a fun stream for sure. What did I miss? I probably missed a lot, to be honest, guys. Let, let's see. How many contracts do you trade on the NASDAQ? Someone asks. Um, it depends, right? It depends on what my risk reward is and my position sizing. The good old three to one risk reward. Yep. And there's, there's Hogue. He's came in to watch me short gold. <laughs> um, let's see. 2320 Hogue. Did you trade that? I do not trade natural gas. Um, I do know. I think coach J has some natural gas trades on. I'm going to move my stop loss back to where it was. This is exactly how I have my trades set up on my live. Yeah, we, maybe we'll we'll get Hogue on here one night while while he's in his pajamas. Um, hop on to slow markets and, and get him to chat. But let's get to some questions. Um, Nike stopped me out, unfortunately. Let's see. Let me see if Nike. Yeah, so I got stopped out. So overall, I am up two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars in my live account um and i'm down about a hundred in my my gold trade so up two thousand in my live short this nikkei um that would might have been another good opportunity if you were looking to short as well um john hogue says he is in so we'll have to set it up um one of these nights uh we'll have to figure out how to get a host in here and as we go through, we'll get Hogue in some pajamas and see what his opinion is on some slow markets. Um, and as we're going back and forth, um, you trade on one minute or five minutes. So it depends on the session I am trading. For example, during my slow markets class, I start on the, the daily and then the, the hourly. And then my, my smallest time frame on my slow markets class is a five minute. Um, during the New York session, I start on a five minute and I also have a 100 tick chart that I watch. Um, Zoro, Dakota, can you have a live account and express funded account? Um, yes, you can. I actually just went through that same process. I had a live $50,000 account. I was also trading three express funded accounts. And today or yesterday, um, the risk management team moved my express funded account profits over to my live account. And now I have about a hundred thousand dollar live account. So yes, you can. 
how long to how long take how long will it take me to be profitable so you probably hear this a lot and you can probably see it all over the internet is everybody it it really depends um for me and myself it, it took me like three four maybe five years from when i actually started trading um seriously and then maybe another two or three years um, when i was much younger and uh, i started trading when i was 18 is what i have to say because you have to be 18 in order to trade here at top step but i started learning when i was like 10 11 12 and there was probably you know three four five years and then i started being more serious when i was going to college and had a part-time job so this was the only time that i could trade and so i was forced to figure out how to trade during the slow markets class even though i want i like this trade the new york session don't get me wrong i love trading the new york session i love volatility as a trader volatility is your friend um, unfortunately you know college job and life um, made it so i could not trade the new york session so i'm like oh, i love trading i want to be a trader so i have to start trading the slow markets and i needed to figure out strategy to where i could only dedicate one to two hours every single night and this is it right this is this is it i i've developed it i've became pretty decent at it it's one of my main sources of income and i've noticed that top step and a lot of other places do not talk about this trading style um and it's a great I, I really love this i hope it helps all of you guys or at least some of you guys it gives you guys you know maybe one another tool in your tool belt uh, i'm not saying this is the only way um if you cannot trade the new york session this is the next best option in my opinion maybe london um or both right maybe you are are able to place one or two trades at night um before you go to bed you wake up and then you could have your normal new york session um i do both sometimes i even trade the new the, the london session as well uh cheeky gold ad no i w i'm not going to add to this position uh, i'm already in my max position size but yeah if you were not if i wasn't sh short gold already um that would be a great area to possibly get short, right? Because this is a cheap trade. You know, quoting Hogue, he's in the chat, he was in the chat, is we're talking about cheap trades. We're, you know, shorting near resistance, having a stop loss up close, and yeah, relative cheap, right? This is a lot cheaper than waiting for it to break down. Um, Hogue, I do not sleep. <laughs> yeah. I, I unfortunately I, I need to get better at my sleep schedule um i usually go to bed at midnight 1 a.m central standard time and then i wake up at around 9 to 10 a.m so i still get sleep um just not as consistent as i want it to be um and not as much as i want it to be how many sample size for your back testing for you to feel comfortable um, going live oh that's a good I don't think volume I, I think time is just as important um, for sample size for me I look at a period of three months um, whenever I'm analyzing my strategy um, I will look at it month to month to see if there's anything serious that I need to do or or that I need to change but I think three months um, for me is where I would feel comfortable saying, you know, this is a good strategy or this is a bad strategy um, and maybe put it to, to a test. For example, you guys just watched me um, transition gold into my trading. I looked at gold. I looked at gold for a week, uh, maybe a week and a half. You know, I'm starting to test gold, um, tested gold in live or in a simulated environment. Um, a very, very small trade on a live account with just one contract. So I'm starting to test gold um, and it will probably be another you know month until I feel really comfortable on trading gold again. So it, it really depends on you as an individual. If you can trade, trade corn. Um, I haven't trade corn. Do we, we probably have, what do we have? Um, jobless claims tomorrow. I do not trade um, the news. I, I do not trade news events. 
I will trade after the news events, and I believe, quoting Rips, the, the afterglow and the, the amazing volatility that comes after those news events. Is there a favorite time that you like to trade? Um, right now, this is my favorite time I like to trade. You guys see I had trades going on. I had that amazing Nikkei trade that I made 2K on, um, and it was, you know, 15 minutes, 2015 in only 15 minutes. So even though this is slow markets, um, yeah, $2,000 in 15 minutes. That was, that was nice, right? It doesn't happen every single time like this. Usually it's a lot uglier. This was a very clean one. And if we're looking at um, technical analysis, look at this. This is a beautiful technical analysis chart. Um, can you guys recognize this pattern? Who, who? I want to see who out there could recognize this pattern. Um, this is a beautiful example in one picture, technical analysis. And you guys seen me place this trade, or you didn't see me place this trade. You see me manage this trade live. I made $2,000 in my live account tonight um, based on this. It is very simple, very straightforward. It's not too complicated. Um, and if you were a buyer, look, you know, buy right at support. This is a support zone. Um, resistance becomes support. Sure enough, that would have worked out. So there is some very, very basic concepts where you don't need to overcomplicate it. I mean, look at this. We broke down below support. We went up, we tested it, and then we sold off. Um, this is the Nikkei, the Japanese market. But this same technical analysis does work um, on, I don't want to say every market, but I would say most markets is what I'm comfortable saying um, on a recorded stream. So I think that's it, guys. A couple more questions, and then I'm going to call it... Um, Oh yeah, keeping it simple. I'm a, I have, I don't have great attention, an attention span, and I don't like to look at too many things. I, you guys see me do this. I, I place those trades in front of you. I trade and put orders on. Like this is the, as simple as it gets, right? Like you guys see, me, I show my phone all the time on here. That's what I see when I place a trade. Sometimes I do not even look at the chart. I just look at the price and I say, okay, you know, this is the price level I'm looking for. I'm a buyer. Once we get into this zone, I'm looking to buy. I place that order. Um, simple, right? Um, and the more simple I can make it, the better it is. Uh, and I think that's anything in life, right? Whether it's life, whether it's yeah, just about anything. If you can make it simple, uh, it's a lot easier to understand and follow your process. So I think that's it, guys. Um, I will be on Top Step TV tomorrow. Let me double check my schedule and make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, give me just one moment and I will double check when I'm going to be on there. I do have an amazing announcement um, that I will be announcing I think I'll just announce it tomorrow. Let me let me see. So I will be on Top Step TV. To let's see, today is yeah. So I will be on Top Step TV tomorrow um, in the morning for Power Players, and that is where I'm going to make the announcement. Um, I will also be on Top Step TV during Power Hour tomorrow. So I you get me twice on. Yeah, you get me twice tomorrow, and then I will be on Power Hour Friday. So I get to trade the close, um, the Friday close with you guys. So that's going to be awesome. Um, announce it now. Now, if I announce it, it's you know what I will. I think everybody who, everybody who is here, deserves to get the news first. So I'm going to go ahead and announce it. Uh, because you guys are here for me on the slow market. So you guys deserve to get the information from me before the the Top Step TV day, day, the daytime gets it, right? So there's the perk. I need to keep giving you guys perks um, for slow markets class before the Top Step TV fast market gets it. Because guess what? Slow markets is a whole lot better than fast markets. Um, in my opinion, I'm in a competition with them. So... Here is the news. Um, 
I am deciding to become a free agent for the Top Step Trading League. Um, so I am stepping down. I am no longer on a team and I am a free agent. And the reason being is I'm going to wait for all the, the news and the rules and I'm going to wait for a lot more details for the Top Step Trading League so that way I can make the best decision on how to build a team and to prepare for the Top Step Trading League. I'm a very competitive person and in the, the light of competitiveness, number one, I do not want a team to be so stacked it's unfair. Um, number two, yeah, I like to be a free agent and I feel like it's only fair to myself to wait for the, the rules, wait for more information about the Top Step Trading League. And yeah, so I am no longer on a trading team um, and we'll find out more. So that's the news. Um, Rips is still 100% my trading buddy. Um, if there's an opportunity for me and Rips to be together, I will, I will take it. Um, one hundred percent of the time. So, yeah, there's my little decision, uh, little decision moment with a LeBron decision. But yeah, no, it's it's honestly, I I think that's fair. Um, I, I think it's only right. But yeah, that's the announcement. I was gonna wait till tomorrow, but you guys deserve to see it first. I am a free agent, and we will see where that leads me. This gold trade is looking good. So. I will catch you tomorrow. Take care.